That didn't look good. I know he had chili last night. Hey guys, it's Coach and Dora with Tactical Hive, and today we're gonna to talk about gas masks. How we employed them from my era and from doors. Yeah. How to shoot them, how to get them on, how to carry them, all that jazz up next. So stay tuned. Okay, today's video is brought to us by Dry Fire Mag. If you guys are living in a striker fire world, having to rack the slime after every dry fire shot is not the deal, all right? You go ahead, pick up a Dry Fire Mag. You could, with an Allen wrench, you could go ahead and set the sensitivity to match whatever trigger pull you have. You just simply cock the weapon, load the magazine, and you're off to the races. This thing resets the trigger on your uh, striker fire pistol without having to rack it every time. You know, if you're, if you're constantly racking, you know, you're breaking that training process, you're creating training scars, highly recommend you pick up a dry fire mag. We use these at my last job to great effect. So go ahead, check them out in the link below and use code TACHIVE at checkout for $10 off. All right, let's get to the video. All right, guys, so we're back. You can see we're in uh, full regalia. This is a uh, good representation of what we wore during our time in an active WMD CBR environment. Coach invaded Iraq and they was taken very seriously as to what they may or may not run into. You know, history is what it is on that one. Fast forward to 2016, and uh, there was this little, uh, little slice of heaven we uh, basically created over in the Middle East called the Islamic State. And uh, that was an active CBR, WFD environment. And uh, we had to dress accordingly. Yeah, initially, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. Uh, you know, the, the we were developing stuff as we went. Um, I don't have the full gear. I mean, you know, if I was actually gonna go into that and bugs and gas, uh, cause that was one of our jobs, was to hunt the bugs and gas that they possibly had at the source. If we were gonna do that, we would have to be completely mopped up, uh, you know, with the, the whole chem suit and mask, hood, all that. But that's when we were actively planning on going in and doing that. If we were just, rolling around it was required in theater to have your gas mask on you so how we this was my combat setup and this is where i held my gas mask so this was it would set in here you open it up open face like this shove it in so you know when the call went out for gas you could pull it out and get this sucker well, of course you gotta take off the cool guy stuff you bury your face in the mask, lift this over the top, hold it nice and tight, suck it down, and then reach back here, and you got these tabs, you pull them nice and tight, and get that good seal on your face. Yeah, so we had this thing fully extended out, all of the uh, retention straps were opened up so he could fold it over the front of the mask, he gets it on, he tightens it up, he knows his sequence, and then he gets his helmet back on. Uh, that donning of the mask, as it's called, has, didn't change uh, in my era at all. So this video is all about the range. We're gonna go ahead and put this stuff on and uh, get, some, get some live fire reps. How to shoot the primary, how to transition to secondary. And if you are going to be using a gas mask, you definitely want to train to it. And that's what this video is all about. Um, gas masks, we, you know, we talked about the history of it, but you know, a lot of people are using gas masks, not only for war fighting, but there's dedicated teams that deal with this kind of hazardous stuff. Firefighters, starting I think uh, in the 70s, really embraced this technology and they've come out with their own purpose-built lines of gas masks because I mean, houses are basically just burning mm -hmm. plastic blocks at this point and that is a hazardous, disgusting environment. And one thing you gotta remember guys, if you're gonna work with this, you have to remember about communication. Yeah, I can't hear, I can barely hear myself. So in order for, for me to communicate with him, it's either gonna to be touching, mm -hmm. hand signals, something over any distance. 
So that's just one of the aspects that you're gonna have to deal with when you're dealing with this kind of kit. So to continue on with what Coach is saying, here on my gas mask, I have a comms unit. This thing's called a squawk box, and it works in conjunction with your comms. And it's an add-on add -on piece that I still have on this unit. I also have sacrificial lenses. I have one of them popped off, don't know what happened to it. Got sacrificed. Yeah, I got sacrificed. It's not what, exactly what happened. <laughs> it was sacrificed. Way so I, these, these bigger lenses are sacrificial lenses in case you, know, you feel like you're gonna get smashed. You don't want to damage the actual lenses on the, the unit. They also come in shade or mm. sunglass version. Why? Because you're entering rooms as explosives, pyrotechnics, flashbangs <laughs> are going off, and you want that added edge. My system is set up for kind of a level two deliberate. So just like in the last video, if you haven't already seen it, um, if you, just in case you missed it, I'm set up for a blower. The blower has the filters down here on the, the unit, and it's basically a vacuum that pumps air into the mass. So when I'm running around and stressed out, I don't fog up as fast. Not, you're not always gonna run like this, Coach is set up for, you know, kind of a lower level threat. He has the canister right on the mask. He's got this nifty little pouch that he adds on to his kit. He can take it on and off as he needs to. And that is how he's running it. So we'll kind of go through both methods and um, run them through their paces. All right, there without further let's ado, do let's get to it. Alright guys, we're going to talk about a couple little things here. First and foremost, gas mask. Coach is running a canister on. He's a primarily a right-handed shooter. He's running his primary secondary on that right strong side. So, the canister is on the left weak side. If he's got to shoot offhand, I guess he'll just have to make it work, but you know, hopefully that we don't get to that. So, as he mounts the shoulder, he brings the weapon up to bear. He's going to go ahead. That canister obviously is not going to impede his buttstock and he's going to camp the weapon ever so slightly inboard to better line it up with his eye. There's a little bit of, you know, and everybody's a little bit different, but you're wearing a lot of gear. The gear's on your face. You need your face to aim. So we're going to make little modifications. So got the canister on the right spot. Weapon is shouldered. He's going to cant it inboard and now he has a clear line of sight and a natural point of aim with wearing his gas mask. So we've got to tweak a couple of things, not the end of the world. Now, if he was running a blower like I was previously, he's gonna take this canister off, attach the hose just like I had, and he's going to run his blower attached to this backpack. That's actually what these fast techs are for. He would fast tech it right in and it would ride right over the top of this smaller lower pouch. That's how he ran it. That's actually how a lot of guys ran it. Coach in those days, ran a backpack that was hard mounted onto his plate carrier. Guys still do that, but you could just as easily go with shoulder straps for a, you know, being able to take it on and off as needed. Right on guys. Well, you know, I hope you like this content. I hope this helps. You know, if you are planning on using a gas mask or just want to have that in your wheelhouse, you're definitely going to want to train. You definitely want to put this stuff on. You're definitely going to figure it out before um, the time it's needed because it does change things up a little bit. It is a little bit different um, If you don't have a blower system running around in a gas mask is terrible um, But if you got to do it, you got to do it. So I don't know, bud, you got anything else? Yeah, so the, the, the good thing is a civilian you're probably not going to run into anything uh, Oh exotic. Mm -hmm. It's going to be this simple stuff, right? Either smoke or tear gas or you know some uh, improvised chlorine bomb like you had to deal with over yeah. with the ISIS guys. So, you know, uh, you're not gonna need full mop gear. Uh, the first thing you need to buy though, is get a good gas mask, get some good filters, more than one, and train guys, train with it. If you're gonna use it, if you got gear, train to it. All right guys, this is Doran Coach, out.